Hi, welcome to Gypsy Felting. Today we're going to talk about how to build a wire framework to do some felting over to give your uh, creations some movability and poseability so you can make them do little things. Now, whether it's a small project like these little woodland babies or something a little bit larger like a wolf, the first thing that you have to do is start with research. And by research, you might want to look at like a drawing book um, or a sc basic sculpting book. This book has some really cool pictures of how animals move, like this deer, and it shows you how they different positions that they would move naturally in. And then it also has like some skeletons, and skeletons are very useful when you're building a wire framework. So another book is, um, or another kind of research thing would be some needle felting books that have like basic uh, kind of how to use wire and pipe cleaner and floral wire and Chanel stems. So we're going to do that today. So grab your floral wire and your needle nose pliers and let's get started. So you're ready to get started building a wire frame and you've done your research where you know exactly what kind of animal or person, doll thing you want to build. And um, some of the examples of trying to, of doing the solid wool versus a wire frame or armature is, you know, this is the snake that I started before I thought, oh, it would be really cool if I could pose this snake and he would stay like in a snake-like position. Um, and I didn't put it in there. So I just made this one out of solid wool, which is really, really cool. And he would make a, a really interesting snake when I finish him. Um, now this snake is a different snake that I did and he is, does have wire in him, as you can see, and it gives him kind of a much more kind of snake-like appearance. And this is a really simple uh, wire frame in that it's a single piece of floral wire with a loop on the end, or maybe a couple of pieces twisted together with the wool um, wrapping around and, and uh, sculpting over that. Now you don't have to have a wire frame. Um, you can totally build little animals uh, that are completely solid, like this little owl right here, or this little doll, like her little arms are, don't have any wire in them at all. But the smaller projects, these ones do. So you can pose them and you can move their legs, which kind of make them just a little bit uh, more enjoyable that way. So once you kind of decide which project you wanna get started with or what animal you wanna do, then we start um, building and twisting the frame from the the wire. You can use several different kinds of wire. You can use like this is floral wire. I recommend like a pretty strong gauge because otherwise it's not going to be strong enough. Or you can use um, pipe cleaner or chenille stems. Chenille regular crafting chenille stems are very weak, um, so you might try to find these real pipe cleaners. These ones have little bristles on the end of them that, or throughout the whole thing that kind of make them rough and they're perfect for grabbing onto wool. And actually these are just, um, I use a single pipe cleaner when I build like one of these little woodland babies. It's very similar to the technique that was shown in the Pocket Ninja um, tutorial. So here we go, we're gonna get started and so cut some wire and build a frame. So when you're starting to build your frame, you're going to have an idea about what kind of animal that you're creating. And this is some floral wire, and the floral wire is pretty forgiving about, um, you know, you can twist it or cut it, whatever you need to do to it. And some basic tools are like jewelry tools, like this is a needle nose plier and it has a little wire cutting on there. And a lot of times when I start to do something, I just cut start by cutting these in half because I know I'm only gonna need like about the half length depending on the, the scale of your project or how big your, your finished uh, piece will be. Or you can use them whole and simply kind of twist them around on each other so that you have some extra reinforcement. One of the biggest things is that you don't, you wanna make sure that you twist the ends of your of your uh, floral wire so we can take a look right here like this is the very end of a floral wire and let's imagine that that is covered in wool you don't want it to poke out 
through the wool and um, cause an injury to somebody who was handling the finished piece. So what you would do is you would just take the end of it and kind of give it a little bit of a turn and then twist the very end of it into like a little loop right there just to protect that end. And you can, I can kind of flatten it and turn it so that I have like just a kind of a little a knob end instead of um, the pointy end of the, of the finished piece. Also, these pieces are more used for um, display purposes or collectible items rather than for children. If you're gonna make something for a child, you know, it's common sense maybe not to put wire in something that for a very young child. So just kind of a FYI, kind of keep that in mind. You can also use these um, pipe cleaners, which we talked about having uh, kind of some rough bristles on the edge of them, which are really good for the, for the wool. They are a little bit like less, they're more flexible than the floral wire. So the floral wire is a little bit stiffer, but I often use these in conjunction and I'll wrap the floral wire around with the, the um, pipe cleaner and just like this so that if this is especially a good technique for um, if you take a look right here it's a it's really good for reinforcing legs and making the legs stronger so that you can actually um, have like a very nice finished piece that is um, structurally sound so this is all things that I derived by trial and error and I've got definitely have some pieces that um, I don't like as much because they're a little bit wobbly in the legs and things. So it's just kind of, um, I have done all the work for you <laughs> instead of uh, you have to, don't have to figure it out quite as much as I did. So just um, keep that in mind. And when we go to build a frame, we start, we can see like this, it kind of looks like the, like the chalk horse of, uh, in Ireland on the hillside. You know, it's very, or like a, an ancient cave painting right now. So I'm just twisting around the the pipe clean or the floral wire right here. And I'm trying to give it a little bit even. You can always kind of trim this or twist more length onto it if you need to. So and this is probably probably one of the most, the little bit more difficult part to start with. Here I started to bend my shoulders and things or the kind of um, framework underneath and you can look at your skeleton pictures to kind of see if you're correct when you're doing that. And the reason why this uh, looks so odd is because this is going to be the head right here along the back and then it's going to have a tail so you want to make sure that your tail is long enough so if it's a wired tail but okay let's uh, move on to the next step So this, this little guy is much more like um, kind of this beginning of a doll um, that you would needle felt uh, over. And I'm gonna show you how to build this little guy right here. So I take my piece of pipe cleaner and like I said before, a good rule of thumb is to cut things in half to kind of get the approximate length of a good starting point for arms and legs and things. So I've cut those in half and I'll get one more and bend this and cut this one in half as well. And we can take a look right here to see. Just um, you want your arms and legs to be as even as possible or uh, make them a little bit extra long so that when you go to, to even them up so that they're the same, you're not kind of making them too short by accident. That has happened to me more than once. So, and then just straighten them out. We're gonna put the little loops on the end for safety. Whoops. And put little loops on the end of this one. Also, if you have anything that has like 
hands and feet and things, you can make those kind of separately and then come back and attach those. So this guy actually has um, wire in his head. Sometimes I build the frameworks like this where the arms and legs are a part of the main structure. I'm trying to remember, let me see. A big part of this is sometimes trial and error. So we're going to twist him together. And you can see how this is working right here. So you just, if you want your, you want the torso to be as long as, as uh, however long as you want it, depending on what kind of uh, you're making, what kind of thing you're making. Like this, I'm thinking was a child frame, so a child wouldn't really need like a really long torso. And then to put like the little bit of neck and head on there, just take it. You can add another piece, or you could even add like um, this is a di the different kind of pipe cleaner. And that would make a nice little flexible head. And we'll just cut that little piece off right there. Twist the top of it. And then just twist this on together. So now you're ready to kind of go from <clears throat> the basic over here. And then we can wrap it in um, the core wool and string. So. That's how they look like that. So when you're creating your sculpted piece, now that you have the framework, um, you want to start to wrap it with batting and get started on sculpting it. Um, this one is wrapped with some cotton batting and string. And then this one is wrapped with wool. And there's a little bit of um, this person, or soon to be person. I think this was gonna be like Little Red Riding Hood's grandmother. Sometimes I start these things and don't remember what I was doing with them. But, so this person is lacking something. It's the hands and feet. And that will be a separate video to show you how to do that. It's just a little bit more tedious than we wanna show in the basic framework. Um, also, there's some other things that you can do where you're adding like a horns or hooves like this unicorn has. Um, and I can show you also how to do that, even wings. So one of the things when you're getting started with the, with the batting, it's just gonna be a matter of how much do you want to start with. Like this is the very basic kind of like little animal frame and I've wrapped the head, but not the tails and the legs. That's because I anticipate that these will be more slender. So I might just start off wrapping these with the wool that I would use for the outer covering. Um, as you go through um, wrapping the frame, you just take some of your core wool and I'll put these over here and take a look right here where you start to wrap from the torso and just as if you were winding up a ball of yarn. Now I will wrap around the legs a little bit. Once again, you kind of pull this tight or you can wrap it with string, but you want this to kind of cover the joints that are in there because the joints are what are going to grab your felting needle and cause them to break when you're working on this. So. It's just a little bit of um, kind of trial and error and kind of like putting the padding there, maybe taking it away, maybe sculpting it down a little bit, whatever you're going to do, um, you kind of get a feel for it. Like I think that grandma here could probably use a little bit more thigh meat right there or you know, kind of build up her shoulders and stuff and just kind of like um, take your time with it and you'll kind of let the sculpture kind of show you what it wants and what it needs. So that's my recommendation for that. And I'll show you some of the examples of things that I've done.
So here's some examples of uh, things that I've already done that have different kinds of armature in them. Starting with the little small projects, these are, here's like a little pocket zombie, and here's a little woodland baby. And they are kind of fully wired with their little frames and things. And these are really good projects, once again, to get started with if you're a beginner. And then here's the wolf, which is a little bit more complicated, where it's one of the bigger pieces that I've done to date. Now, armature doesn't always have to be a person or animal. It can also be things, like just something that you needs extra structure. Like here's some, um, some trees on their own little hillside, and they are wired into the hill. So just kind of wherever your imagination takes you, you can build whatever you need to build to make your own world of felting. Welcome to the island of misfit felted things. Like, these are some examples of some things that just kind of um, didn't quite coalesce, you know, in a vision. And I'm going to show you how I've learned from these examples and how you can can too. So this was supposed to be um, a buffalo, and he's actually has some um, an interesting kind of armature because. He is sculpted over a car wash sponge. Like if you look over here on this leg that's missing, there is car wash sponge over here that I actually sculpted and then um, put the wire into, I built his legs and then put the wire into the, into the car wash sponge. And that's fine, except that they pull off like kind of easy, which is a problem. So when you're doing something, you kind of learn like, um, once again, by trial and error, what will work and what won't. So what I would recommend for this now is kind of going back and reinforcing the legs and making sure that the legs are strong enough to carry your, your finished thing. So if I was to actually finish this buffalo, he wouldn't be strong enough to stand up. He's, he's not, well, despite the fact that he only has three legs, the poor little guy, but um, he's just kind of weak. So what I would do is I would probably um, ditch this whole thing and start over again, actually and build like a stronger framework with um, an actual skeleton and then put the padding and stuff over it. I could even use the sponge again, but I would um, totally do it a little bit differently now. Um, sometimes when you go to build uh, tails and things, you have to build the tails into the, into the framework, like this headless little mouse right here, so awesome, uh, his tail comes out and curls around and that way he can kind of stand up and stuff. Now he does have no head, but we will ignore that for a moment. And then like likewise, this elephant, which um, kind of got too long of a body or something like that, I forget, but it was going to be a great little elephant. So his trunk comes out from his body like this. And so he is another example. Now. This sculpture came out perfectly fine the way it was, but if I was to do it over again, I only put wire in the head of my turtle. So he has wire, actually his tongue is the end of this wire right here. And then he comes down over the neck and attaches in here because I thought, okay, that'd be nice to have a poseable head. But was I, what I wasn't realizing is that his legs kind of makes him sit on the ground a little bit differently. So it's not a bad, it's still a really great sculpture, but if I was to do it again, I would probably make his legs so that he could stand up and not kind of slouch down like that. But you can always go back and do some surgery on your things and kind of fix them a little bit. And you know, it's one of those things, it's troubleshooting. And that's why I'm here. Thanks for watching Gypsy Felting. If you have any questions, please an uh, enter them in the comments below. And don't forget to follow along for more adventures in needle felting, subscribe to this channel, and visit my Etsy store for supplies and kits for the projects featured here. Thank you.